All right, it is uh, March 10th, Sunday, and um, got our right aileron here ready, almost ready to go. And uh, I think I promised yesterday I was going to talk about what I would do different uh, if I did this again. And this isn't, uh, I'm not an authority on this, so you, know, you can take this with a grain of salt, but this is, I think this is what I would would do. Um, first of all, when you put that foam in there, it kind of squirts out the top when it dries and cures, so this will end up getting shaved off. Now I want to talk a little bit about what happened on this. Um, we did the counterbalance in this, had it all done and everything, and we put the foam down. Uh, it ends up being right around here, and we did the foam inside of there. And after we did that plug on there and everything cured up and everything, I went to move it one day and I could hear the shot rolling around in there. Not rolling around, but you could hear it moving. Um, so I decided to, I uh, thought, well, let's just, we'll pop that foam out of there, redo that, and um, just get a little more foam in there just so it kind of holds it a little more steady. And what happened was uh, I took the foam off, we poured the lead out of there, and discovered that the plug that was about down in here uh, was very thin on one side. Uh, like I could see daylight through it. It wasn't, it wasn't all the way through, but you could see daylight through it. Like there was just a membrane of a bubble in there um, on one part of it. That if that eventually did wear, that pretty soon that lead would start coming out all the way down. Could roll out the end of the aileron on that side. So I decided to redo that. It was cold up here, we got our, our extension hose, we put it in there, we filled it up, looked great. Uh, came back the next day, yeah, that was on Tuesday, came back Tuesday to uh, fill it up and had it up on end, started, didn't even look in there, started pouring the lead shot in and there it went, all the way down to the bottom. So I looked in there and that foam had all collapsed. Uh, and I think it was because of the cold and I hadn't realized it at the time. So we did it again and this time we set it, and before, the first time we did it, we had laid it down like this. So we did it again, left it sitting upright, thought, well, okay, this will fix it. And we kind of suspected maybe it was a little cold, so we had our heat gun, we warmed all that up, put the foam in there. Tina came up on Wednesday to check it, and she texted me and said, nope, same problem. So we ended up taking this home, uh, we put the foam in it, worked great, and... Um, the thing that happened though was the foam so you're supposed to put foam in here at least the at a minimum of 14 inches and i went i think it was 16 or 17 inches down in here probably about down in here shot that foam in there well when it cured it cured up it expanded and cured up and when i measured it, it is just 14 inches exactly 14 inches from there to the end so when we went to do the counterweight in here uh, we poured it in, and that lead was like right up to about there. And I, I wanted it. Well, there wasn't. There would be enough room for a little bit of foam in there. But the thing is, is when this aileron gets painted, it's going to be heavier, and it's going to take more counterweight. So uh, there's no room in here to add any weight to it. So what I did was we uh, actually put a little bit of weight in from this other side, filled it in. It's probably about that much weight. It ended up being really close to the same spot. So we did that. Everything's good. We've got a plug in here that goes about down to there. So we've got room in here when we paint it, when we get it painted. And when you have to re-counterweight this, we'll be able to drill this foam out and add weight to it and then re-foam that. Anyways, all that being said, this is this is going a long time here. Um, I think what I would do, um, if I was to do this again, before riveting this, before uh, putting the rivets in, because there's rivets here and there's rivets on the underside, I would take a rubber plug that's about that size of that, that hole or that, that tube. I'd shove that rubber plug probably about down into here and then figure out then I'd do this after I drill the holes for the rivet. So you could stick a you could stick a rivet tail in there. You could shove that plug down to where it stops against that rivet tail, and then you put the rivets in on either side of it. That holds that rubber plug in there. Then you could just shoot just a little tiny bit of foam in there just to seal it up, and then you could do the 
uh, rest of your counterbalance on there. But anyway, that's just my idea. Do you have any better ideas? No. Negative. Negative. Uh, so anyway, sorry, long story on that, and uh, but we're gonna get started on getting this installed and counterbalanced and rigged, and uh, we'll see how far we get with this. So here we go. Here's that bushing that uh, we had to make, and you can see on here where you have, to, you have to bevel that edge on there, and what it does, it ends up, it just matches um, that swivel, that uh, rod end swivel in there. Uh, but anyways, that's, that's kind of what that looks like on the edge when you do that, and that's 50 thousandths. So you went 50 thousandths down on that bevel, and then did it in far enough to uh, match up with that, that rod end. All right, went 10, 10 turns in on both of those rod ends on there. And this I was going to show you, we got that uh, bell crank locked into position, and this is where we end up. We're just, we're about that far off. So we'll do like yesterday, and we'll put, uh, we'll put a turn in on each end of that bell crank and see, uh, see where we land. Yeah, I didn't have a very good angle on that. There's a... Uh, so you can see that angle better. Okay, we went in one turn on both ends and uh, we're still just a little tiny bit low. So we'll take it in a half turn and that should bring that uh, aileron up to match the middle of the wingtip. Got the aileron adjusted now. It just took another uh, half turn on that um, that rod end, and uh, we got it perfectly adjusted. So now we got to tighten down the jam nuts, and that's kind of another fun part. Jam nut is right there. That jam nut. So I gotta get my wrench up in there and uh, get that tightened down. Yeah, you're not going to be able to see it when I do it, so I'll show it when I'm done. It was hard to show, so I didn't uh, do video on this, but we did get the aileron cables tensioned. And we do have a tension meter that we're using, and we got these to 25. And what we did was... 
we centered up the centered the stick and just use those quick clamps just to kind of hold it just we put it on there so it would just kind of hold it in place right there and then with the we had the rigging bolt inserted out on the bell crank on both wings with that done we tensioned this cable this aileron cable here there and there we tensioned those to uh, 25 pounds on the tension meter and once we got those set to 25 made sure that we we're still vertical here and neutral centered and once that was done we pulled the rigging bolts out and that actually released a little bit of the tension in, in there and then we used the center turnbuckle here to bring everything back up once we undid the uh, rigging bolt what did it drop to about like 20 or eight, 18 pounds or something like that uh, and so then we tensioned it back up here brought everything back up to um, we did we went 25 pounds I'm assuming over time these cables are going to relax a little bit and lose a few pounds but uh, brought those back up to 25 pounds while also making sure that we're still neutral position here and with that neutral in there we should be pretty close whoops yeah and we verified that with a stick in neutral um, we've got they're in the same position on both sides out there so the next thing to do is we will adjust uh, the deflection the stops and the deflection so that we get uh, the up and down deflection on the ailerons um, set correctly so I did find after we got those cables all tensioned up there we got those set to 25 pounds and um, we did, did have to adjust it a little bit on that top turnbuckle to let a little bit of the a uh, little bit out or no we had to bring a little bit in it was a little loose when we took the rigging bolts out it was a little loose and so we tightened it up on the center turnbuckle on the top and uh, brought everything up to 25 pounds but then we noticed uh, both ailerons ended up aligning when everything was neutral they were just a little bit low and we've since fixed this but that's that's how they lined up when we first uh, got all the rigging uh, the tension set on the cables so so on the cables for the ailerons um, when the cable goes forward the aileron comes up um, so what we did was we went one turn actually first we loosened we loosened this by one turn and then we tightened this by one turn so in, in essence we've we lifted we moved this cable forward by one turn and we did that on each side so we turned that in one turn turn that one turn and turned what wait no we went half so this would have been sorry we went one turn in here and two turns here because I think that doubles doubles that uh, anyways but that got those adjusted back up to uh, to where now they are flush with the trailing edge of that wingtip All right, we completed the uh, aileron rigging, got that all done and adjusted, and we checked, and somehow, I think we did this actually when we, uh, when we built the wings and we had the flaps on at one point, um, we checked the clearances and everything, and we just now checked rigging, and that's all within spec on rigging. Uh, the angles uh, are all good. So, um, yeah, we're happy with that. Another beautiful day today, but not quite warm enough to have the hangar door open yet. I think we're getting pretty close to being able to do that. 
All right, got uh, our big project done for today, and that was flaps and ailerons. We got the ailerons installed and rigged, and uh, then we went back and rigged the flaps as well. So that stuff's all uh, within spec, and uh, cable tensions are good. And I uh, even double checked the rudder cables. Those were looking pretty good. Uh, started to do a little more work on uh, lacing up those bundles that come from the wings and then drop down, drop down inside. Um, so I didn't show any of that. But um, yeah, that's not much more to say about it other than uh, we're pretty happy to have this step done. Uh, so we can move on to the next thing. Uh, that'll probably be um, elevator rigging, uh, I think, but we'll have to see. So anyways, thanks for watching the videos, and uh, everybody have a good evening, and that's it for now.